Well, Dr. Patrick, this next question is for you, and it's about spike protein. And we know that the spike protein can be dangerous and cause a significant immune response. And there's this idea floating around that because spike protein is dangerous from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, therefore the COVID-19 vaccines must be as dangerous as well. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I have a lot of thoughts on that, Kyle. I, I've thought long and hard about it, but sort of before I get into some some of the details, I think the spike protein has really become a, a, a common household name at this point. Most people around the world know what the spike protein is, mostly because it's it's the entry point for the SARS-CoV-2 virus to get into our cells. There are about 26 different spike proteins. I shouldn't say different. There are about 26 spike proteins that line the surface of a SARS-CoV-2 viral particle. And the spike proteins will bind to a receptor on many different cell types we have in, in our body um, that have a receptor called ACE2. And when the spike protein then binds to the ACE2 receptor, it undergoes a conformational change that essentially refers to the structure of it, of it changes. So it binds onto this receptor and it then elongates and sort of twists and turns around. And then it fuses with the cell membrane and is engulfed inside of the cell. Um, another way it happens is through endocytosis. But essentially the, the point I want to make here is that conformational change that happens because when the spike protein initially binds to the ACE2 receptor, it's in some it's in a conformation called the pre-fusion conformation. You can think of it more like a closed type of conformation. Once it binds, this triggers a conformational change for it to, again, like I said, elongate and sort of twist around. When it does that, that is referred to as the post-fusion conformation. And the reason that's really important is because all of the vaccines that are available in the United States under either emergency use authorization or under FDA authorization or up and coming vaccines. So that includes the Moderna and the Pfizer BioNTech mRNA vaccines, the Johnson and Johnson adenoviral vaccine, as well as the Novavax vaccine. They all contain um, a insertion of two proline amino acids into the spike protein to lock it into the pre-fusion conformation. And this was brilliant work done by the structural biologist, Dr. Jason McClellan. He's at the University of Texas in Austin. And he thankfully had figured out this way to lock viral proteins into the pre-fusion conformation. First, it was with the respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, and then later he had figured it out for the other coronavirus, beta coronavirus, the MERS coronavirus. And so he really had a running start there. And um, the reason that is so important is because when you're comparing the spike protein from the SARS-CoV-2 virus, as I mentioned, there's 26 of them on every viral particle, to the spike protein that is in the vaccines, including the mRNA vaccines and the vaccines in the United States, it's a different spike protein. It's a spike protein that cannot undergo that structural change. It does not elongate and, and you know, dig into the cell membrane and fuse with it. It's, it's, a, it's a different spike protein because of those two proline amino acids that were inserted to lock it into the prefusion confirmation. And one of the first things you learn as a scientist, as a budding young scientist, is that you can't compare apples to oranges. You can't compare two different things. You have to compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges. And so when you're talking about a different spike protein, it's a different and structural, structurally, it's different, right? You can't take a study that's looking at the spike protein that is from the surface of SARS-CoV-2 and say everything that that spike protein is doing applies to the spike protein in the, in the vaccines that are available in the United States because it's different. And so I, I think that's a really, really upfront important thing to understand. And 
the burden of proof is on, you know, people making the claim that the spike protein from the mRNA vaccines is dangerous because some studies have shown that this spike protein from the SARS-CoV-2 by itself can be dangerous. You have to show that, and it has not been shown. Um, so what these studies that have shown that the spike protein from this, the from SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, how it can be dangerous, there's been some in vitro studies, which means cells in culture in a dish. When you dump spike protein on them, it can cause the activation of of, of cell signaling pathways that could lead to cell death. This is often referred to as cytotoxicity. It's also, there's also been some animal studies shown where either recombinant protein, which is just basically made in a lab, so they make the spike protein, or what's called pseudovirus um, expressing the spike protein. So this is not the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but it sort of acts like a virus to allow it to get into cells. Um, if you directly inject the pseudovirus with a spike protein into the trachea of hamsters, it causes severe lung damage and also gets into the circulation and causes circulatory damage and vascular damage to, to, the, to the vascular system. And so the, these studies, and there's been you know, a few of those, have really spurred this idea that the spike protein from the vaccines must be dangerous because these studies showing the spike protein that's found on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 is. And again, you can't compare, you can't make that comparison. And that's really just one aspect of, of um, you know, this, this story. The other aspect has to do with where the, where the spike protein goes in the body. And, you know, I think first and foremost, anyone that's concerned about these studies showing that the spike protein by itself is dangerous should be terrified about getting SARS-CoV-2. Because for one, you're getting, as I mentioned, 26 of those spike proteins on one viral particle. And how many viral particles are replicating inside of your cells at any, any given moment? I mean, thousands, you know, thousands of them. And on top of that, there have been studies that have shown that SARS-CoV-2 virus is detected in multiple organs. You know, this isn't just in the nose and in the trachea and in the lungs, which in and of itself is bad. I mean, the, the, the damage to your lungs is, is you know, one, one major concern. But the SARS-CoV-2 virus, again, with spike protein, has been detected in the heart in humans. It's been detected in the brain. It's been detected in cerebrospinal fluid. It's been detected in kidneys. It's been detected in the GI tract. It's been detected in the testes. It's in many different tissues in humans. So, oh, and it's been detected in plasma in the circulatory system. So again, you know, the concern should be amplified for actually contracting the SARS-CoV-2 virus if you are concerned about the study showing spike protein itself is, is dangerous. Um, and that sort of leads me into the, the vaccines. And generally speaking, I'm going to talk a little bit more about mRNA vaccines because there's been some more concern about that and there's been some more data on that. But people are concerned that these mRNA vaccines are, are getting into multiple organs and therefore the spike proteins getting into these other organs and causing damage. Again, different spike protein, so that needs to be considered. But a lot of this data stems from a, a lot of this concern stems from a, 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 some data that was generated by Pfizer and BioNTech when they were doing a bunch of safety studies looking at in, you know, what happens when you inject really high concentrations of the mRNA vaccine, uh, of the mRNA vaccine um, by Pfizer into rodents. And so um, I think the first thing to keep in mind, and I know that at MedCram, you guys have had people on like Dr. Shane Crotty, who's explained how the mRNA vaccines work, how you have, you know, the mRNA um, inside of a lipid nanoparticle, along with some other factors like polyethylene glycol, and that is injected into the deltoid muscle tissue. And that basically, after that injection into the tissue happens, you have the lipid nanoparticle with the mRNA vaccine now getting inside of muscle cells, using your own cell machinery, the ribosome, to actually make the spike protein, which itself has been shown to peak after 24 hours. And then after 48 hours, the spike protein half-life of the protein that's made is it's degraded. 
is not very long lasting. The mRNA itself also has a half-life somewhere between, you know, 48 to 72 hours. And the lipid nanoparticle has this a very short, like within hours, it really only lasts long enough to protect the mRNA from being degraded. But once you actually do make the spike protein, the spike protein itself is, it is expressed on the cell surface and um, what's called the plasma membrane of the cell. And the spike protein itself has a region on it called a transmembrane domain that sticks it. it it's like an anchor. It anchors into that plasma membrane. So it is not freely floating out into your circulation. It is stuck there. And at that point, you have other immune cells that recognize this foreign protein and, and, and begin the uh, process of, you know, making antibodies and you have that whole, you know, immunity effect. But um, the concern was from this with, from this Pfizer study where rats were given a dose that is 10 times the amount of what of hu humans are given. So humans are given 30 micrograms of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine for one dose. The rat was given 50 micrograms of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. So if you were to do the calculation uh, for a rat equivalent dose, so if you want to give the rat what humans actually get, an equivalent dose based on their body mass, it would be more like 4.86 micrograms. So they got 50, that's essentially 10 times, okay? And um, this was done for a reason of, okay, what happens when we give them a huge amount of the vaccine? Well, what was found, um, the the lipid nanoparticle that contains the mRNA was radio labeled. It's like a tag that you can visualize things. And that radio labeled tag was found in other organs. It was, you know, found in a variety of organs. Again, it was to a very small degree, but it was found in other organs. And so people got really concerned uh, that these mRNA vaccines were traveling to other organs and causing damage. And a few things to keep in mind there. One, the dose was super high. And in fact, within the same document, the same Pfizer study, they gave a more equivalent dose to mice in this case. They gave mice two micrograms of the mRNA vaccine. And that vaccine did not go to all these other organs. In fact, the only organ that was shown to have any amount of, of the mRNA, of, of this radio label tag was the liver. And it was completely gone after 48 hours. And so, um, I think that's really good news because it suggests, yeah, when you give, you know, a rat 10 times the amount of what the humans are getting, you might have some spillover. But on top of that, again, the radio label tag that we're looking at is, is the lipid nanoparticle. And if there is some spillover, you know, in the muscle tissue, what surrounds the muscle tissue is your lymphatic system, lymph, where all the immune cells are. So you essentially have your immune cells like dendritic cells recognizing something foreign, in this case, a lipid, a radio labeled lipid nanoparticle with some mRNA in it. And they, they, they basically chop it up and, you know, it undergoes phagocytosis and is, and is taken to other um, tissues for recycling. And so whatever we're seeing in those other organs, we don't even actually know if that's, you know, the intact mRNA vaccine lipid nanoparticle. It's probably just remnants of it because that's what your body does. So I think all of those factors in combination give some reassurance that people should not be so concerned about M the spike protein from mRNA vaccines or from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine getting to other organs and causing, you know, re wreaking havoc, essentially. Um, and I will just add one more thing to that, and that is another study, and this is something that I've seen concern about uh, on the internet. This, this study was done in humans. It was a very, very small sample size. It was 13 people, and they were given the Moderna vac mRNA vaccine. And um, what was what was found in that study is that 11 out of 13 people, there the S1 subunit of the spike protein was detected in their their plasma. Three out of the 13 had the entire spike protein detectable. However, the assay that was used to detect this sub S1 subunit and the spike protein itself in these 13 people has a false positivity rate of 25%. That's one in four people showing they have spike protein. So that, so, so the way this study, this was another study done and it was, um, they took samples pre-pandemic. There should be no people with spike protein pre-pandemic. And they were showing that they had spike protein. So with a sample size of 13 and a false positivity rate of 25%, you can't make any conclusion from that small study 
showing, you know, that 11 out of 13 people had S1 subunit of spike protein showing up in the plasma. I just, it just doesn't make any sense to, to make any strong conclusions from that. So I guess that, you know, the bottom line is that, uh, you know, as Roger mentioned, we've had over 177 million people fully vaccinated in the United States. You know, if this thing was causing severe damage in people, we would know about it. And, you know, we do know about the 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 adverse effects that are occurring, like the myocarditis that is happening, you know, in some young people. It's still quite rare, but um, it's also it does occur. And again, as Roger mentioned, it's happening sixfold higher in in younger, healthy individuals than it is in people in in these same same individuals that are uh, being being exposed to the to the COVID nineteen vaccines. 